And we begin tonight at 6 o'clock with this remarkable video of a building collapse in downtown Buffalo this morning. Look at this video here. Look at the building on the right. Thankfully, nobody was hurt here. This was captured by security camera at the Catholic Health Facility right across the street. It was a building that dates all the way back to the late 1800s. It's located right at 324 Oak Street. And we have team coverage tonight looking at multiple angles of the collapse. We're going to start with two on your sides, Dave McKinley. Tonight, Dave, kind of walk us through exactly what happened today. Scott, at 1048 this morning, that building believed to have been part of the landscape in downtown Buffalo for around 140 years, but which has been vacant in more recent times, gave way without warning and much to the astonishment of those who happened to be in the vicinity. Like you sound like a thunderstorm. It looked even worse when, as seen in this security camera video from Catholic Health across Oak Street, the front of the more than century old structure gave way. Chris Cook works at an architectural firm on the opposite corner from the building that suffered the partial collapse. And we all turned to look and I just saw this huge dust plume you couldn't even see across the street. So we came out to see what was going on. We knew there were some workers on the roof next door to that building and wanted to make sure they were okay. and. When the dust settled, there was a giant gaping hole in the front of the building. And she took pictures of what it looked like before fire crews arrived. There were four to five workers in a, a one story building adjacent to the uh, structure that, that collapsed. They were all able to evacuate safely. Uh, as you can see, there was a pickup truck outside and that, that suffered some damage. With everyone accounted for, firefighters gave a lift to a structural engineer so he could get a bird's eye view of the damage and begin making assessments. Once they get a closer view and uh, after a partial uh, demolition, they might have a better idea of what caused the collapse. Right now, we're looking at a uh, uh, taking partial part of the building down, so a partial takedown. And after that, uh, structural engineers will make a determination uh, whether or not the entire building has to be taken down. Following the heavy storm that moved through the area this afternoon, the building owners, as you saw there, brought in a crew with a giant excavator to begin what they hope will be a partial demolition still going on now, taking out the top two floors. They'll be working on this until dusk and resume tomorrow if necessary, Scott. All right, Dave McKinley tonight, Dave, thank you for the update. And another angle that we have been looking at today is, of course, the ownership of that building. It has been long boarded up and the most recent ownership group that controlled the property purchased it just last year. To when you decide, Steve Brown has been looking into that for us today and uh, what have you been able to find out so far? Scott, almost at the very beginning, the first thing the owners of this building, Legacy Development, wanted to talk about today was the lousy condition of the building when they bought it and they named the previous owner publicly. And we're unable to immediately access the resources necessary to uh, rectify the longstanding neglect at the hands of the previous landowner, uh, Bruce Adler. That name might be familiar because on the other side of this block two years ago, Another building, then owned by Adler, 435 Ellicott Street, was quickly condemned and demolished when city officials discovered the deteriorating conditions. This was in December of 2019. Making the situation worse, the building had tenants who were forced out, including a bakery on the ground floor. The entire episode then angering the mayor. Totally irresponsible property owner from everything that I have seen, uh, from uh, everything I have been able to read. And in fact, uh, that individual, Bruce Adler, has really damaged a small business person uh, that had their business in uh, his property. Adler owned six buildings in this neighborhood. 324 North Oak, the scene of today's collapse. 435 Ellicott, the condemned demolished building, and four others. In May of last year, Adler sold all of them to Legacy and according to property transfer records, walked away with 2.7 million. Now, Lou, Lou Petrucci, the deputy commissioner of permits and inspections for the to permits and inspections department for the city government, tells two on your side that prior to the sale of the properties, Adler was taken to court over the condition of this building that collapsed today. Petrucci says Adler was fined the maximum. $22,500. Petrucci adds there's no additional recourse for Adler now that the buildings have changed hands. Scott, back to you. 
Alrighty, Steve, thank you very much for that report. Now, for the last decade or so, many of these older buildings have been purchased and then restored throughout Buffalo in a part because of the Buffalo Preservation Board taking stock of buildings across the city and ensuring that they are preserved rather than being demolished. I'm joined now by Buffalo Preservation Board Chair Gwen Howard. Gwen, thanks for joining us tonight. Gwen, let me ask you first and foremost, you stopped by the scene earlier this afternoon. What was your initial reaction when you saw what happened there? Well, thanks, Scott, uh, for having me here. The um, I, I was actually really surprised that the hole had been limited to the center of the building and the cornice was still intact, which is, it was very localized damage, um, which is a testament to the overall quality of this masonry building. Um, it was in, in very poor condition, it's obvious, but um, but it is a testament to the quality of that construction that it was able to withstand the damage the way it did. Right, well, well, with Buffalo having really so many buildings from the late 19th century and early 20th century, how can these buildings get secured and be redeveloped safely? One of the one of the key um, one of the key tools available to people with older buildings is historic preservation tax credits, and those have been used very successfully by the people um, in our community to redevelop even some of the buildings that are in the worst condition. It provides some extra capital for those projects that can overcome the hurdles that are necessary when you're trying to preserve an older building. Um, but we really need to make sure that there is good inspection, 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 mm -hmm. and when properties get in this condition, they're turned over to housing court. And, and you really have to be able to get people who can go and do the work, which is not easy to do. Is there a lot of red tape, so to speak, uh, that slows down the process? There is really not much more red tape with a older historic building as with any existing building or any building project, obviously, Building permits are necessary, and the work does need to be um, to get permitted, have architects and engineers working on it, and be inspected as part of the process. There is a little more red tape when you're dealing with a historic building, particularly if you're going to make use of federal and state tax credits. We all have to remember that if we're going to take advantage of funds that are coming from the government, sometimes there are rules that you have to follow that may be more stringent right. than yeah. just a regular project. You know, I mean, this. let's be honest, this could have been a disaster today. It, it could have been a building with people inside, people walking uh, below it on the sidewalk. The current owner told reporters today that they had a whole lot of trouble finding construction crews that would even work on the building due to its condition. I mean, it's hard to find people to work at a grocery store these days. What do you, what's your response to that? That, that is a, it's hard to find anybody to work on anything these days. And when the building is in poor condition, people are going to turn their back and go for easier work. I mean, that's, that just, that's an unfortunate piece of the industry. Um, but there are, there were contractors that were willing to come work. I know that Empire Building Diagnostics was uh, providing pricing to do this work. So I know that there are companies that were going to be prepared to do this work. All right, Gwen Howard. Gwen, thank you so much for joining us tonight. We appreciate it. And we're very thankful uh, for your time, and we're thankful nobody was injured today as well. Absolutely. Thank you very much, Scott. All right, my pleasure. We appreciate having you on the show today.